tell uh, whether or not central rear drive underlies hyperdynamic liability and stick with that. Or some evidence for this. All right, so I want to start by saying that centromere function is highly conserved among eukaryotic organisms. Centromeres are very, very important. And they're important because the centromere needs to be properly defined among the chromosome in order for chromosomes to segregate to the proper cell during mitosis and meiosis. So if you don't have that, you get a lot of aneuploidy and uh, non-dysfunction, things like this. And this is really, really bad to not have the correct number of chromosomes. And while the function of centromeres is highly conserved, the underlying basis of what a centromere is is just not conserved at all. So centromere sequences are um, highly variable among organisms. Yeast is like a 125 base pair sequence. Uh, it's a larger eukaryotic organisms like rice and humans and all these. You tend to have centromere sequences that are arrays of satellite DNA. The size of the satellite changes, the sequence of that satellite se uh, is variable, and uh, so the underlying sequence of this highly conserved process is not conserved whatsoever. Another layer of what a centromere is, is that centromeres are epigenetically determined, so it's not just based on sequences. So in a normal pair of chromosomes, you have histone, histone H3, binding wrapping DNA, in this cartoon. But the centromere has a special modified histone H3 called centromere histone H3. Or in animals, we call it SEMPE. And that SEMPE molecule specifically binds the centromere DNA sequences. And it's conserved across organisms. Um, so anywhere where you bind centromere histone H3, this is where the kinetic core machinery will come to attach, microtubules. That actually defines where the centromere is. But it's very rapidly evolving. So um, over there, you can see canonical histone H3 from yeast to humans. That's an amino acid alignment. And it's just obvious. It's highly conserved. Uh, over here to the right is an alignment of SEMPE. There's lots of stuff that doesn't align. Uh, so like yeast probably isn't in there. And the, the point is, like, just look at it. It just doesn't align. It's very rapidly evolving. So this begs the question, um, all right, you have a highly conserved process, but uh, why, why is there such rapid evolution of the, the, com the components of that process of centromeres? Looking at the clock. <laughs> all right, so I have one hypothesis. There's several. <laughs> All right, but first I want to tell you, or remind you that female meiosis is unfair. So this is male meiosis here. You can't see that. Male meiosis. The, there are four meiotic products, and all of them become sperm in a typical, typical organism. But in a typical female, only one of the four meiotic products becomes the egg. And so female meiosis is unfair, so keep that in mind for what I'm about to tell you. So this um, uneven, uh, this rapid evolution of centromeres could be caused by basically driving mechanisms within the centromere. So here is a cartoon of a centromere. In yellow is the underlying satellite DNA. It's bound by SEMP A in green, uh, followed by the kinetic core machinery, which is attracted to SEMP A, and then the microtubules. And you can see that in this cartoon that there's equal number of microtubules, the centromeres are equal in strength. But the satellite DNA has a tendency to expand. If you have expansion of that satellite DNA, you could per, uh, possibly recruit more SEMPE, recruiting more kinetic core machinery and making a strong centromere uh, relative to the weaker centromere to the outside. And the important thing about strong centromeres is in several systems, strong centromeres have been shown to preferentially migrate to the egg cell during female meiosis. So you get female meiotic drive, centromere drive uh, uh, happening. And so the end result here would be that you increase that strong centromere frequency in the population, it wants to fix. And this is all probably good and fine in the female germline for the most part. But it's problematic in the male germline, where you all four meiotic products become sperm. 
you have this unequal tension process going on, um, and this can lead to lots of chromosomal non-disjunction and breakage. And those broken chromosomes now make their way into the sperm, uh, causing uh, sterility or whatever. It's been shown uh, in Mimulus, but it's not super well uh, understood. But it's a hypothesis. So this male sterility would impose selection to uh, make centimeters equal strength. And that uh, evolution, that co-evolution, could come by uh, modifying the sub molecule to basically bind both centromeres equally. So, uh, so to uh, retain parity among centromeres. Okay, so in this way, you have a co-evolutionary uh, scenario where centromeric DNA sequence uh, evolves rapidly and semp A comes and suppresses drive. So they're always going back and forth. And the question for speciation is, does this rapid co-evolution within species uh, lead to hybrid incompatibilities between species? So this brings us to the Dutansky molar model. And you can imagine you have an ancestral species uh, here with semp A as a purple dot and the sequence, the centromere sequence is some green lines. Uh, in this species, you get drive, so you get some orange uh, lines, or red, big B, big B. So you have a driver, you have a suppressor, some A, evolving on that driving background, blue. But in the other species, there's no drive. If you hybridize the two species back together, for the first time you bring that blue some A, back into the green genetic background, and it no longer properly defines the centromere, causing things like <coughs> aneuploidy, or just overall, uh, you know, improper centromere identification in this hybrid offspring, and this would really screw up mitosis and meiosis. Okay, so that's the general model. I'm trying to study this in stickleback fish. I'm studying all sorts of sticklebacks, but the ones today, are free spine stickleback and black spine stickleback. If you cross them reciprocally, 100% of their offspring will die. And the way they die <laughs> is like this. Oh, this is a developmental like time course of black spine at the top. You just need to see that there's a fish over here. <laughs> um, that's normal. There's a fish down here, that's free spine stickleback. In the middle are reciprocal crosses, and these are like the best fish that I could find. Normally, after a couple days, they turn into blobs of cells. It can take a couple days, it can take 30 days, but one thing that never happens is they never become a fish. That's the most fish that they ever become. I don't know how to describe things. They, they, they just turn into a massive cells, okay? And they're gonna die eventually, you can tell. All right, <laughs> Jeez. All right. Um, okay, so why do I think centromere drive is happening on stickerbacks? I have some evidence for this. First, that sempe protein is very rapidly evolving in black spine stickleback. So black spine stickleback and free spine are about 15 millimeters diverged. It's uh, approximate, well, obviously. <laughs> Um, so 22 amino acid differences, uh, but if you go 20 million years further back to this uh, brook and nine spine stickleback, there's only eight, eight amino acid changes in that sempe molecule. This indicates something very rapidly happening in the black spotted branch. If you do, uh, if you look at the centromere sequence, I don't know the sequence in black spotted stickleback, but I do in, in free spine. This is a metaphase spread of three spine stickleback. Those green dots are where centromeric DNA probes are binding. 42 chromosomes, 42 green dots. You don't have to come up if you can trust me. Over here is F1 hybrid. There's 42 chromosomes here and 21 green dots. So those probes don't bind the black spotted chromosomes, so they're diverged. But in general, in an F1 hybrid, if you do a metaphase spread of just an individual fish, you see really, really weird uh, karyotypes. Uh, these are just from a fish, a single fish. They're supposed to have 42 chromosomes, but you see they have 20, 22, 16. 
So during mitosis, you're just purging, you're just getting rid of chromosomes randomly. Uh, or sometimes you obtain some. <laughs> in general, an overall uh, pattern here is that I'm, uh, this is how many chromosomes you should have. This is how many chromosomes uh, actually occur in those cells. So there's just purging of chromosomes, which is, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay. Interestingly, uh, there's actually a bias of what chromosomes get purged. So uh, that data is from a free spine female by a black spotted male, so is this. And the, the centromeres that are retained, you're kicking them out, but you're actually preferentially kicking out black spotted sigmoid chromosomes. Uh, I'm not sure if that has to do with cross direction or what, but it's super bizarre and uh, really, really interesting. Okay. And finally, when you start to do, get into genetic manipulation world, uh, you see things that start to suggest that maybe the centromere is really involved in this incompatibility. So up here is a wild type fish. Here is an F1 hybrid. Here is a wild type of a fish that was injected with basically control of CRISPR constructs that should in effect uh, some day. Down below are uh, three spine stickleback fish that are injected with guide RNAs targeting Senbe. So the goal is to remove three spine stickleback Senbe and to swap in black spotted stickleback. So to do an overall gene replacement to really do uh, isogenic tests of this hypothesis. And so all of these are missing three spine stickleback Senbe. And uh, there is a black spotted stickleback Senbe construct that's in the fish, but this is a work in progress. In any case, it's not clear that it's actually integrated into the genome when you make these very weird chimeric kind of things when you do CRISPR like this. In any case, the punchline is these fish closely resemble that fish. And that's where this project is, uh, where I'm continuing to like go with this project. So I think it's promising. I hope it's right. Um, okay, so in conclusion, three spine stickleback, uh, three spine by black spotted hybrids all die. The F1 hybrids exhibit extensive aneuploidy. The core centromere components have diverged considerably between these species, and genetic manipulations are underway. So, with that, I want to thank uh, the Katie Michael Lab and some funding, and I'll take questions. I don't, the reciprocal is a lot messier. Just like, so. <laughs>